Welcome to the International Interventional Cardiology Channel. For the first video of the channel, Professor Marco Valgemigli is sharing with us evidence-based strategies for antithrombotic therapy for managing coronary atherosclerosis. Professor Marco Valgemigli is the Deputy Chief of Cardiology at Cardio Centro Ticino Institute, Lugano, Switzerland, and Professor of Cardiology at the University of the Italian Switzerland and the University of Bern, Bern, Switzerland. Professor Valgemigli has served as a task force member of several European Society of Cardiology guidelines and chaired the 2017 ESC focused update on dual antiplatelet therapy in coronary artery disease developed in collaboration with the European Association for Cardiothoracic Surgery. He also chaired the research committee of the European Association of Percutaneous Coronary Intervention from 2011 to 2016 and has received numerous scientific awards, including the highly cited researcher in the field of clinical medicine. Hello everyone, my name is Marco Valgimigli and I am the Deputy Chief of Cardiology at Cardiocentro Ticino Institute in Lugano, Switzerland. And it is my privilege to walk you through a recently published consensus document on antithrombotic treatment strategies in patients with established coronary artery disease. There's been a variety of documents potentially addressing antithrombotic therapy in patients with CAD, with coronary artery disease, starting from the 2016 ACCHA DPT focus update followed by the 2017 ESC focus update and since then many guidelines either addressing ST segment elevation myocardial infarction, non-ST segment elevation myocardial infarction or chronic coronary syndrome CCS have dealt with this uh, topic. However, none of them is actually fully updated with respect to the most recent evidence which I would quickly share with you uh, shortly. And also, none of them is entirely focused on the broad field of antithrombotic in patients with any type of CAD. This document distinguishes three types of coronary artery disease patients, namely those with chronic coronary syndrome without prior MI, those with acute coronary syndrome, either with or without ST segment elevation, as well as patients with CCS with prior MI, which is, of course, an evolution of the latter condition. And also distinguishes the type of revascularization, depending on the presentation profile that these patients have received. This document proposes a completely new paradigm shift with respect to the way antithrombotic should be classified in practice, where the classical approach is based on the postulated mechanism of action, either in terms of the number of antiplatelet agents or the number of oral anticoagulants. However, especially when the latter class of drugs are given at low dose it's very difficult to tease out whether the mechanism of action is truly through an antiplatelet effect or an anticoagulation effect. And also leveraging on the common wisdom nowadays that the bleeding risk is simply proportional to the number of antithrombotics treatment given at the same time in a single individual patient. This document proposes to classify antithrombotic based on the number of antithrombotic treatments given at the same time in the patient, either single therapy, dual therapy, or triple therapy. The high bleeding risk conditions is defined as the presence of one or more of the academic research consortium high bleeding risk criteria, either major or minor, or based on the five item precise DAPT score in terms of at least 25 or less. The ischemic risk is deep phenotyped in this document, meaning ischemic risk of what? What type of ischemic risk does prevail in this single individual patient with CAD? Is this prevailing a coronary risk 
in that condition, the document proposes that the P2Y12 inhibitor treatment based approach should be favored, or is it the vascular risk prevailing, such as, for example, in patients with CCS without prior MI, patients with prior cerebrovascular events, or patients with prior major adverse limb events? In that case, a dual antidrobotic treatment should be preferred. The evidence basis for this document has been used. We systematically reviewed all available evidence in terms of randomized control studies, and we have been able to identify as many as 43 studies, including almost 190,000 patients, who have been included in studies addressing the type and duration of antithrombotics uh, within 12 months after ACS or coronary vascularization. Similarly, we identified 19 studies, including almost 140,000 patients, who have been included in studies addressing the type of antithrombotic treatment, so-called post-acute, meaning after 12 months from an ECS or coronary revas. Both types of studies have been summarized in a network meta-analysis actually in two network meta-analyses published as a companion paper to the consensus document, which is also available for fruition. Also, recently, has been an emerging uh, evidence suggesting the new or increasing role for a P2Y12 inhibitor monotherapy treatment strategies such as the Sydney 2 collaboration as shown here, which is an individual patient data meta-analysis of six studies, including almost 25,000 patients, which clearly showed that after one to up three months DAPT, dropping aspirin and leaving the patient on a P2Y12 inhibitor monotherapy treatment strategies is not associated with incremental ischemic risk, yet to a roughly 50% risk reduction of major bleeding complications. Also, the ischemic protection proved to be entirely consistent in patients who underwent complex PCI, in patients with one complex PCI criterion, or two or three or more complex PCI criteria, really suggesting that dropping aspirin is the way to go to mitigate the bleeding risk while maintaining the ischemic protection. Also, even more recently, the Panther collaboration has been published in the Journal uh, of American College of Cardiology a uh, few weeks ago, which is really showing that in terms of monotherapy, a P2Y12 inhibitor monotherapy treatment strategy should be favored over aspirin monotherapy because the former is associated with a significant 12% risk reduction of the composite endpoint of CV death, MI stroke, with the number needed to treat for benefit of 123. This benefit does not come from fatal endpoints, which were pretty much alike in the two treatment categories, rather from MI and a borderline reduction from stroke, which mainly came from a massively significant reduction of intracranial bleeding, definite stent thrombosis, definite and probable stent thrombosis, as well as GI bleeding were all consistently reduced with P2Y12 inhibitor monotherapy as compared to aspirin monotherapy. So to close, let's walk very quickly, high level, through these new treatment uh, pathways which are supported by the current consensus document. In patients with established CAD with ACS undergoing PCI, if the bleeding risk is deemed not high, the default approach is now one up to three month DAPT in terms of aspirin and ticagro followed by ticagro monotherapy, whereas second line treatment option is the conventional DAPT up to 12 months in this case, preferably with, with prasugrel, second line ticagro. Patients with CCS undergoing PCI, we propose to have two default approaches. It remains unclear which one should be preferred between these two, being either six months of aspirin and clopidogrel, followed preferably by clopidogrel monotherapy, or one to three months, a combination of aspirin and clopidogrel or ticagro, 
followed preferably by the P2Y12 inhibitor monotherapy treatment strategy. Long term, the default approach is pretty much dependent on which ischemic risk prevails in the single individual patient that we would like to treat. Is this a coronary risk prevailing? Then a P2 or 12 inhibitor should be preferred. Is it a vascular risk prevailing? Then aspirin and low dose rivaroxaban should be preferred. Now, switching gear and uh, walking through the high bleeding risk patient category, you see very clearly from this visual display that the combination of treatment, a combination of antithrombotic treatment should be discouraged and maximum should be happening up to one month in terms of a dual antiplatelet therapy followed by monotherapy treatment strategy preferably with a P2Y12 inhibitor. If you want to know more about this consensus document please go and consult the published paper. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Dear peers, if you have any interesting or even controversial comments, please feel free to post them or email them to me at kol at p2pnd.net. I will reply to these comments in a special Q&A video next month. Please take 10 seconds to learn how you can be more than just a spectator at P2P. Right now, tens of thousands of healthcare professionals are actually watching this video. You may take this opportunity to post your own cases, best practices, and research data in the comment box underneath the video. So, don't miss out on this chance to make your work known to global peers. If you have any captivating insights that you would like to share with your peers, please email your thoughts to kol at p2pmd.net. Here at P2P, we welcome collaboration with the brightest minds on the planet.